My name is Liam. I had a stroke when I was five years old. We were out at my sister's house and it was past his normal bedtime. He was acting goofy and silly. Um, and then all of a sudden he just walked right into the wall and I was like, that's not normal. So I had him stand up and I asked him to raise his arms and he could only raise one. I asked him to smile, told him a joke. Only half of his face went up for the smile. He had him squeeze my fingers and he couldn't with one arm. So I knew there was something wrong. So my sister and I rushed him to the hospital and it was there that they told us we needed a hospital that had a pediatric neurologist. So they transferred us, did an MRI and found that he had an acute ischemic stroke that night. When we were discharged from the hospital, it was obvious to us that Liam would be needing some therapy. He wasn't speaking, he was neglecting an entire side of his body. We followed up with our regular doctor and she recommended Mary and Joy. I am Liam's speech pathologist. I've been seeing Liam for the last four years. When I first met Liam, he was having a difficult time expressing himself. He would say maybe one and two words at a time uh, or use sound effects in play. Um, after a period of time, I was able to determine that Liam had expressive aphasia, which is the result of his stroke. Elizabeth knows Liam from where he first started. She knows what he's into. She knows where he's going. I remember at the very beginning waiting for him to come out of therapy and her coming and telling me, I can tell he has a lot he wants to say and he just can't do it. And I almost cried because that's what we noticed at home too. And she said, no, we're going to get him there. He'll be able to do it. It's just going to take work. Liam's come a long way in the last four years. Uh, over time, he's progressed from using one word phrases to being able to formulate sentences and tell stories and just tell his mom about his day. Um, and over time, I've gotten to know a lot about him. He loves rock climbing and doing taekwondo with his grandfather. Um, he also loves fire stations and anything outdoors. Um, he is an outdoors kid. When a child is receiving uh, treatment at Mary and Joy, we take into account not only um, the child's interaction with the therapist, we look at the whole picture. We want to know how the child's interacting in their environment. That's rehabilitation, how a child is functioning and acting in their environment, and that incorporates school or extracurricular activities uh, that they may be involved in. If they have a particular goal area, we like to keep that goal in mind because it's going to be motivating for the child. It's very common when children are growing and changing that their therapy needs will be changing with them. So it's very important for the therapy team to uh, adapt to how the child is changing. Very often uh, children with special needs will be receiving rehabilitation services throughout their childhood. Um, you know, it's not a, a six week period of time that we'll be treating them. It's over years that uh, they'll receive treatment. Friends and family will ask, you know, you know, Liam's been in therapy for four years. How long is this going to last? And the answer is his aphasia will be with him the rest of his life and he will always need strategies for dealing with that and therapy is the best place for him to get those strategies. Sometimes I think some of the other parents that I talk to who don't have kids with special needs, they don't necessarily get it. Everybody thinks they're busy. Every family is busy. You have to run off to karate class, to dance class, pick him up from school, get him to this place, to that place. And we have all of that, plus then we have tutoring and we also have therapy. When you have a child that's developing typically and reaching all of their milestones, and for Liam, his language skills were always amazing. His vocabulary was amazing. He'd tell these great stories with great imagination. So to have a child that was once developing typically have a life-altering event, it really shakes you as a parent because you, all of a sudden, your expectations and your hopes and dreams for them changes and it causes you to reevaluate what's really important. My favorite story about Liam is from a couple years ago. Uh, his classroom teacher asked the children what they wanted to be when they grew up. And you heard the average responses, doctor, veterinarian. And so I asked Liam, did you say firefighter? And he said, no, he said a good person. And that's one of my favorite stories about him because that's exactly who Liam is, is a good person. We were rock climbing the other day and he made it up a wall that he's never made it up before and he gets down and I said, wow, I'm amazed that you just did that. And he said, well, I used to be scared. I don't know what happened. All of a sudden I wasn't scared anymore. So I just kept going and I did it. And now I'm not scared of it anymore. And 
just that attitude is it's contagious and even when I'm working on something that I'm struggling with I think you know what don't give up just take a break and keep trying because it, that's exactly what Liam would do. Children see disability impairment the way I wish everyone in the world would see disability impairment. Um, they don't see what they can't do, they only see their ability and what they can do. Liam, what do you want people to know about strokes? That strokes could happen at any age and that um, strokes, and just because you have a stroke doesn't mean that you can't do everything.